you put out victory on a Saturday night. Brings the three and one season. And I'm looking forward to looking at the film today. Uh, improving on the things we need to improve on. I have a 24 hour rule, and then it's on Detroit. Positives on offense, some of the positives, no penalties. And by the way, we uh, only had three penalties in the ball game, which we're proud of our young men for making an improvement. They worked very hard all week on it. Uh, we still don't want three penalties. They're going to run for the penalties today. But obviously, that's a market improvement. We're proud of our young men and our coach staff. Red zone offense, three of three. Eight out of 14 on third down. And we had five explosive plays over 20 yards. Defensive positive, stop the run. We improved our strip attempts. One of the things that we wanted to improve on is attempting to get the ball. And we thought we played with good effort. On special teams, our kickoff coverage, proud of Cam Gamble, the way he kicked the football. Punt coverage, zero return yards on five total punts, which is exactly what we want. Field goal protection was good. Well, five out of five on PATs. Offense improvements, ball security. We don't want to give up any turnovers. Execution, pass protection, we want to finish blocks and overall communication. Defense improvements on third down. We want to get off on third down. We didn't do it. We didn't contain the quarterback well enough. We lost contained many times. The quarterback ran on the edge and made some plays. The reversers got outside of us. We want to get lined up versus pace tempo. A lot of the time we weren't lined up properly in our gaps. And we'll still continue to improve on high discipline and pass coverage. On special teams, on punt return, we have 57 yards of lost, lost and hidden yardage. We need to make more better decisions on punt return. Me and the coaches met on it today, and we're going to coach our return a little bit different. i got to put that on us. We didn't coach them well enough there. Kickoff return, we had 12 yards lost and hidden yardage. And we've got to do a better job on our blocks. Okay, on to uh, on Detroit. It's a very well coached football team. This is a proud program that's won a lot of games. Uh, we're very familiar. A lot of our coaches are familiar with this staff and with this program, and we have utmost respect for them. Obviously, they're three and one, one and zero in the Sun Belt Conference. Coached by Neil Brown, who spent some time at Kentucky and Texas Tech. Uh, their turnover margin. Is even with plus three, we need to take advantage of that. On offense, the offensive coordinator is Kenny Edenfield. Kenny Edenfield is a friend of mine. We coached together at Nickel State. He's been there for eight seasons, and he's doing a tremendous job. They're a spread team, up-tempo, zone scheme. They like to stretch in the zone read. The quarterback gets the ball out fast and will challenge the defense vertically, just like we saw last week. It's almost the same offense. We got 10 returning starters. For the 2016 team, they average at almost 500 yards a game, 24 points per game. They've got some good running backs. they got three running backs back there that can play football. But their leading running back is Jordan Chun, number 38. Very versatile. He has 60 rushes for almost 300 yards and does catch the ball out of the backfield. He leads the team with five touchdowns. DeAndre Douglas, 80 junior wide receiver, has 19 receptions. Brandon Silva, number 12, senior quarterback. He has completed 65% of his passes, over 1,000 yards, two TDs, and two interceptions. On defense, 3 4. Defensive coordinator, Vic Kenny. Vic has been at Clemson's, Kansas State, North Carolina, a guy that we know well. He's a, he's a good football coach. They have six returning starters from 2016. They've given up an average of only 317 yards per game, 14 in the SEC, in the NCAA, allowing 18 points per game. Troy defensive force, two fumbles, three interceptions on the season. Top players are Rooker, Folsom, and Russell. On special teams, their punt returns after 13 yards per return, 27 in the nation. Kickoff almost 25, 28 in the nation. Very solid on special teams. Okay, that's my deal for today. <laughs> Any questions? Coach, we uh, we saw Ed Paris in that heavy knee brace. Do you have any update on him? Who's that? Ed Paris. Yeah, Ed uh, is going to be out for the season. Uh, just went through an operation. And hopefully we can redshirt him and get him back for next year. Coach, how's Darius feeling? 
Yes, ma'am. How's Darius feeling? Darius is out. I don't know if he's going to practice this week, and I don't know if he's going to play, but I said that last week and he played. So we're going to see how he goes on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, but he's hurt a little bit right now. Ed, Ed on the uh, Ed Paris note, who, who has to step up? Obviously, who are you expecting to kind of fill that rotation Eric role? Eric Monroe, you know, uh, John Battle, uh, who is currently out for today. Uh, you know, a lot of young guys we got to check out out there, but uh, Eric Monroe would be the guy right now. What's John's status going to be? John is out right now, but I think he's going to play this week. But obviously, we, got to, we have to see as the week goes by, but I think he's going to be fine. Coach, any thought to put Cushion Berry at center and, and clap at guard? And what, what's the downside of maybe a move like that? Uh, that has not been that has not been discussed. We'll stay with the same group we have. Okay, as a follow-up, can you do anything, you know, better there? Or is it just yeah, we, we we talked uh, we talked to Ed, and uh, you know, there's some things that we think that uh, we're gonna get better at with Ed there. We're gonna work on some things with him. And uh, it's not all him. Uh, we, we just we didn't play well up front, and so he's a freshman. And, but we expect all the guys to play better. And uh, obviously, he's going to make some mistakes, and he did. But the rest of the guys did also. Hey, coach, up here at the top, is Jacoby an option at safety? Maybe to go back to yeah, that side of the ball. Yeah, he could be, but he's doing so well on offense that uh, we're not going to do that right now. Obviously, that would be an emergency, but we're not ready to go there yet. Coach, I know you focused a lot on cleaning up penalties last week in practice. What are you? What's your main focus this week for practice? Well, execution, starting fast, uh, playing better on offense, uh, not making the mistakes that we did in protection, uh, be able to run the football, getting back to LSU style, uh, being physical on defense, getting off the field on third down, uh, finishing games. It seemed like we started very slow on offense this week and ended up very fast. We started very fast on defense and ended up very slow. We need to play a complete game, especially this week. Hey, Coach, I know it's kind of an old topic, but it seems to be lingering a little bit. How much were you just blindsided by, you know, losing to Huma in the preseason before, you know, and how is it hurting the offensive line at this well, point? Well, you know, it's something we dealt with. Obviously, it was a blow to us. But I think our guys have done a good job of dealing with it and not talking about it. But obviously, anytime you lose a sort of like that, it, it's a blow to your offense. These guys would be second team right now. He'd be starting, and uh, they'd be getting very few reps. But uh, they're in the fire, and, and you know what? They're good players, and I believe in them, and they're going to get better. Ed, you plan on continuing to give Miles reps in a, in a close game? Yes. And what did you see from him last Great. week? Great. was four out of five. They're fantastic. Uh, he missed one. You know, the one he threw him out, the out route, uh, was almost a pick. I think it was DJ was open right behind him. Uh, you know, that's going to be expected. They're going to make mistakes. I thought he threw the ball very well. Great release. He made some great decisions. He dumped the ball to Darrell and went, I don't know, 30 something yards down against the blitz. That was a perfect read. Uh, the interception that he threw, it was between him and the receiver. The receiver moved out a little bit, and uh, it could have went either way. No blame on anybody else. It could have been executed better. I thought he did fantastic for his first time when they're under fire. Ed, over here, um, we saw you make a change at punter, go go with Zach later on in the game. Yeah. Is that competition open at this point, or, or where are you guys at? There? Sure. I think I think that uh, Zach is going to be our punter until he gets beat out. And, um, Obviously, both of those guys have done a good job, but we weren't pleased with the inconsistency. And Zach has showed that he could putt uh, during the week. We wanted to give him a chance. I think he had a 50 and a 45 yard. He did a very good job for us. Mr. Uh, we actually saw a little bit of that four wide set. Uh, I think it was the only one play. First time we've seen it this season. You know, Are you getting a little more comfortable there? Do you think we, we see that a little more moving forward? I think that uh, when we get Stephon Sullivan and uh, Drake Davis, Jacoby Stevens, and maybe a guy like D. Anderson would come around. You know, he's been injured a bunch. And get the young Jefferson up to speed that we can go for a while. But we're not ready to make a living out of that. We're we're not uh, we're not well versed in it. We haven't practiced it a bunch, and we don't feel like we could uh, have a lot of success in four wise right now. 
Is that just a matter of more experience? What's kind of the holdup still? <clears throat> I think it's more experience and better receivers. Uh, more receivers with experience. Uh, get better receivers that can play those positions. And uh, we think we have a couple of guys, but a couple of them are not eligible right now. Hey, Coach, um, up here. Um, you said that Troy has the same kind of fast-paced offense that Syracuse had. Um, what are some keys for your defense to make sure they don't get worn out um, early in like, yeah. early? Yeah, you know, we need to rotate better. And obviously, we're very thin. And uh, I don't think Rashard Lawrence is going to play this week, which he played last week, and he does give us a big boost when he played. I thought he played fantastic. We're very thin, but we have to learn how to rotate our guys earlier in the first and second quarter. So they're not wore out in the third and the fourth. And I think you'll see an improvement in that this week. Uh, on Richard Lawrence, um, how are his ankles? He said he, he said he tweaked one, and and how was treatment on Sunday? I guess. And then, just your D line, how different is it when he's out there? How important is it's it? Night that he's healthy? day. Thank you, Shay. It's night day. He's a tremendous leader. It seems like he does everything right. He's getting everybody else lined up. He makes plays. He has the heart of a tiger. That's, I knew it. I knew it. That recruiting, uh, I knew Rashard would be the team captain of our team one day and lead us to many victories. And uh, he did it at Neville, and he's going to do it again here. But I, I, he will not play this week, and hopefully, I can have him. We can have him by next week against Florida. Coach, you um, you put Nick Brosette in a big spot. Yeah. The other night he came through. Can you just talk about that? And is that a message to everybody on the sideline to be awake? You never know when you're going to get no question. called on. Hey, hey, you never never can tell. We put 11 men on the field. We fight like Tigers. And his name was called upon, and Tommy believed in him, and he did it. Nick, Nick is going to be a good back for us. He just got to get his reps in his turn. Coach, you talked a little bit about Miles. Would you like to see more extend him for longer? And how do you guys approach that with the, the room in the week building up? I mean, Discussion you have, or is it just? I have. That is our starting quarterback. Right. And I, 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 I handle that. The team knows that, and I'll tell them that today, and they understand. And I told Miles during the, the day Saturday, I said, "Be ready. I'm going to put you in." And uh, I think that uh, it's unfair to him that the drive ended in an interception. But what I did want to do is put the pressure on him to have to go win the football game because Danny is our starting quarterback. That's why we put him back in. And I'm very uh, grateful that that drive was very beneficial to us, and uh, we did the right thing there. Uh, the, the punt returner situation, you mentioned you need to do the coaching differently. Have you thought about putting Dante, or do you just believe you need to get the message to DJ in a different way? I think it's going to be, I know it's going to be DJ. I think you just got to get coached better. For, for instance, a rugby punt, and we had their single. We knew it was going to be rugby punt, but we, we didn't relay it to him in time. And uh, if he'd have been relayed to it, he'd have moved over to the side of the rugby punt, which, which would have been to his left, and then the ball wouldn't have been down on the one-yard line. So those are all some technical areas that we did. Uh, we're going to back him up. We had him at, at 10 yards. We're going to back him up to eight. So he may be able to feel some of the punts that are going behind his head, but we'll not back up behind eight yards. But the punts that land in front of us, when our feet are flat, we want to be aggressive and go get them. That's where the hidden yardage came from. Coach, right here in the front. Um, Syracuse had that drop touchdown. Um, you said there were some busted coverages. When you go back and look at that on the film, how much do you stress, like, um, other teams can, can beat you. They're going to catch that ball when you get an SEC play. Yeah, no question. And uh, also, how much more pressure does it put on these other um, defensive backs when a guy like Dante is only getting five or six looks the whole season so far? No question. Well, well number one, we have we, we've always been great at LSU in man-to-man -man coverage. And we take pride in playing bump, bump coverage. And we need to get better at it. And, uh, you know, Syracuse has some good receivers. But as you said, we're going to play a lot better receivers. So we're working on it. We're doing some things. You know, we're not a too high safety um, defense. We're an old cover two where you have help all the time. We don't, we don't believe in that. We believe that we let our corners play. And every once in a while, we give them help. But most of the time, they have one-on-ones out there. And we believe in them. We believe we can cover most people. So we expect them to do that. What was the uh, last part of your question? 
how much more pressure does it put on other guys when um, Dante is only getting maybe five or six looks so far this season? They're not throwing the ball at him. It puts pressure on these younger yeah. guys, right? Well, it does. But you know, Greedy's got you know three nice interceptions. You know, one for a touchdown. So you know they, they're going to throw away from Dante. He's a good corner, but he can't fall asleep there because people are going to test him. And uh, we like the way Greedy's playing. Uh, Kevin came in and did some good things. We need to get some some better reps out of him, maybe some more reps out of him, maybe some more consistency out of Greedy, but he's a young player, he's a redshirt freshman, and we think he's doing pretty well. A Adrian McGee, y'all think you're going to lead him there at right guard? <clears throat> no, we haven't discussed that yet. Uh, well, we think Ed Ingram is uh, a right guard right now, and uh, but we're glad that Adrian can come in and get some reps there. Wait, what did you what did you see from him on film? He did well. He did well. Uh, he was assignment sound. Uh, he got turned a little bit on his technique because he hadn't played a while, a little rusty on his technique. But I thought his assignments were good. Uh, they had a little middle blitz we call gut cross. He did a good job of picking it up. He did a good job of getting to the second level. Gave us some stability there. And uh, But he did. He, he had a couple of technical errors that uh, I know Coach Grimes is going to fix. Donovan Campbell is a guy we've seen in and out of practice. What's kind of his status right yeah, now? Yeah. Uh, he's out right now. And uh, he may end up getting redshirted this year. I don't know that yet, for sure. Coach, you reopened the field goal competition, but you haven't had a chance to kick yeah. any field goals the last couple of games. I mean, yeah. how, how is that going? I mean, Jack, uh, would you like to maybe kick a couple before you go to SEC play again? He sure looks good with extra points, five or five. <laughs> but he's doing good in practice. Uh, he, he has secured that spot right now. He's our field goal kicker, but obviously, uh, you see him doing it again, but I think you can do it. Coach, we're a third of the way through the season. I know you talked about it after the game, kind of evaluating where yeah. the team is at. Do you and the coaches sit down and, and, you know, I know it's tell the truth Monday, but are you kind of like, this is who we are and this is how we need to progress? Well, uh, we're three and one. <clears throat> Obviously, we'd like to be four and oh. Uh, we play well in spots. Uh, we're strong in some areas. We're young in a lot of areas. We're going to continue to get better one week at a time. We're going to focus in on Troy, and we want to play a complete game. That's our, our focus. We take it one day at a time, one week at a time. Obviously, we're pleased with the win at uh, Syracuse. There's a lot of spots we didn't play well. We all know that. And those are the things we're focusing in on. Coach, how would you evaluate how Arden has been his first two weeks back? Do you think he's still kind of just no question, game. rusty, rusty, very rusty. But you know what? He's 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 as hard as a critic, and uh, he's he's uh, down to two sixty now. And uh, we want to lose some more weight, but he's not in football shape. And I said that to him coming out. He's not Superman. He knows it. Uh, he wants to do great. He missed three sacks. He was all over the quarterback. He could have came out with three sacks in that game like that. Just one one step away. Or, elusive quarterback. He could have had a great game. He didn't have it. He missed a couple assignments. He did some things well. Uh, I talked to him yesterday on the phone. He was in good spirits. He's going to come in today and work very hard. Uh, maybe I can convince him to stay for another year and get better. <laughs> Coach, uh, your guys have done a great job at spreading the ball around so far this season. How are you all going to continue to keep that up? We're going to continue to give the ball to many, as many guys that can catch it. And uh, if they can't catch it, we're not throwing it to them. And uh, they know that. But we want to spread the ball around. I talked to Matt about it this morning. He has a great plan. You know, Jacoby sees him touching the football, the backside of the backfield. He's doing a tremendous job of spreading the ball around. We don't want to continue to do that. Drake Davis showed, mm -hmm. Stephon Sullivan showed. Hopefully, we can get D. Anderson in the mix and continue to use our talent on our football team. This is just something that we're trying to figure out the difference is when, when uh, uh, Danny was in the game versus when Miles was in the game, it seemed like the plays got off faster, like they, they developed faster. And a lot of the early stuff was the backside pursuit, catching a back, you know, or whatever yeah. it was. Is there truth to that? Did you see any of that on film? Well, uh, there are two different quarterbacks, obviously. Uh, Danny has a lot of experience. Uh, there are some things that Danny does better than Miles right now because of his experience. There are some things that Miles does better than Danny because of the quarterback that he is. Uh, Miles has a very quick release. That's what you're seeing right there. 
He can see the field very fast and make decisions. He does that very well. Also, Danny has Danny has had an excellent year in our opinion for us. He's missed a couple of balls, but he ran the offense exactly like we want him to. Obviously, there's a package that we can do with Miles. There's an expanded package that we can do with Danny because he knows all of the offense. I think that's the difference. Uh, when, when you and Coach Groms look at the O-line film, specifically the pass, pass blocking, what is it, Ed? Where, where are the struggles? Is it, is it physicality? Is it communication? Where do you see the struggles at specifically? Technique. A lot of technique. thought their D-line had some good technique, and we didn't. We didn't play with great technique. I don't, I don't think we're going to estimate them because Gr Coach Grimes told me about the talent that they had at Syracuse, and I looked at him, and we evaluated him as a staff. But we've got to win on one-on-one -on -one blocks. And, uh, you know, if you, if you start chipping them back to help the left tackle and you start keeping the tight end to help the right tackle, then you only got three receivers in the route, and then you're limited. So we need to do a better job on one-on-ones. A lot of times they were blitzing those inside linebackers, and uh, we should have picked them up. There was a couple of miscommunications in our protection. But the ones that we're most disappointed on is the technique on the one-on-ones. Coach, we saw the defensive package with the one down line and the five linebackers, Arden and Caleb on the field at the same time. How do you think those, uh, those guys did? It was package? good. It was good. The thing that limited us a little bit was the speed in which they were running the plays. You know, a lot of things that we do are predicated on the strength of the, where the field's at, where the boundary's at, the strength of the formation, away from the strength of the formation. And there's a lot of communication that has to go on there. And uh, they just didn't give us enough time to get all that done. Now, when we do have time, I think you will have to see an expanded package. Straight ahead. Uh, it with all the talk about miscommunications and some of the, the errors on offensive line, has there been any kind of discussion about maybe simplifying things, maybe less shifts, changing anything? Uh, Were you in our meeting this morning? Say that again? Were you in our meeting this morning? <laughs> no, but Ross was. We've had, <laughs> we've had that discussion of simplifying things. First thing Matt came up to me said, Coach, we had too much in. First thing he told me this morning, we need to simplify. And we're going we're gonna to streamline what we're doing. Do what our players can do best, play LSU football. Everybody good? Thank you, guys. Have a great day.